Welcome to episode 109 of the Bandhive Podcast. You're listening to the Bandhive Podcast, the number one online resource for DIY bands to learn about the music business and touring. If you want to turn your band into a lean, mean touring machine, you're in the right place. Now, let's get this show on the road. It is time for another episode of the Bandhive Podcast. My name is James Cross, and I'm not here with Matt Hose of Alive in Barcelona, but we have another very special guest, a return guest, Brandon Cunningham of Kauai AF. How are you doing today, Brandon? I'm doing good, James. Doing good. Glad to be back. Glad you, you, uh, you know, hit me up again. That's great to hear. Yeah, it's it's been so cool to see your progress. And for those who didn't listen way back to episode 30, this is episode 109. So that was literally like 80 episodes ago or 79 episodes ago. Brandon was on the show to do a really special episode, How We Can Fight for Racial Justice in the Rock Scene. That was episode 30, if anyone wants to hear it. If you haven't yet, I definitely recommend it. Go to bandhive.rocks slash 30. But today, Brandon, you're actually here to talk about your band, which is also really important and uh, a little bit more of a lighthearted fun topic than what we were discussing last time. So first of all, can you just give us like a little catch up on what's been going on with Kauai AF in the last year and a half since we talked to you? Oh man, no problem. Yo, this year has been crazy. Okay, so positive, super positive things. Just like last week, we hit over 100K followers on TikTok. That's huge. You're already at 109K now. Exactly. So you gained 9K in a week since then. That's amazing. That's what I'm saying. Thank you. Like, yo, so when we started TikTok, you know, however it goes, like like almost two years, we talked about 100K and how important that is. When you're at 60 followers, that seems like so far away. That seems like so far yeah. away. And we were stuck at 70 something for a long time. It felt like it's like, like we couldn't bridge that hump. Just like hit a plateau, huh? Yeah. And we can talk about that plateau. But yeah, we've been on the up and up again. We've been making some really cool new TikTok friends and other like content creators working with them. Also, we have our first ever a uh, collab slash feature for a song that's i don't want to say it's coming out soon but we're definitely working on it it is coming but production's wild because there was that hurricane that you know whooshed everything and so that definitely set uh recording back quite a bit but nothing that's not manageable we're still almost finished with also the album we're almost finished with the debut Sick. album and so that's crazy. It's it, I don't have to sing on the album anymore. And that's crazy to say because we've been in that limbo stage of, of always recording for the album forever. And so on the last day of me recording, I was like, I don't have to sing for the day you ever again. That's it. That's history. Yeah. <laughs> You're done with that part. That's like, cool. Now, album number two. Hey, 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 hey you know what? It is in my head. It is in my head. I did have a lot of things planned, but right now it's all about the first album and like, you know, getting that rollout started. What else? I just want to jump in here while you're thinking and say, we're recording this on December 4th and the episode comes out on December 28th. So one, happy new year's to everybody. Cause it's going to be new year's Eve in a couple days, unless you're listening to this later in time. Cause that's the beauty of podcasts. But secondly, I would be very surprised if you don't hit 110 K by the time this episode airs, because you only need like, what, 700 more, I think. So at this rate, we're talking about you hit 100K last week and you're at 109 now. By the time this episode airs, it's going to be, I hope, a lot more, like 115, 120, 125, or who knows? Like, knock on wood, I'm not jinxing anything here, but fingers crossed. That's the goal. That's the goal. Little, little tidy goals, because, you know, we could say... Oh man, a million. All right, come on guys. Let's let's not think about a million right now. <laughs> let's get to 150 and then we can, you know, think about 200 and all that stuff. If you break down your your goals, it's much more reachable and it's not as stressful. I'm checking how many followers Matt Cutchell has right now. He's got 1.5. So if Matt Cutchell has 1.5, I think you guys can do 1.5, like long term. And I'm also secretly hoping that Matt Cutchell is that collab you're working on, because I mean, that would be amazing. Actually, I don't got to be secretive about the collab. We are collaborating with another up and comer like us. Her name is Kiana Nicole. She is a, a trap metal slash emo rap metal artist. Man, she's so many things. It's so hard to put her in a genre, which is awesome. But yeah, she's really cool. 
she's out in LA, which is another reason why we gotta get to LA. Because when our song drops, we're definitely gonna perform it together. And that's cool. And she's cool, and everyone should definitely check out Kiana Nicole. And while I'm at it, check out her uh, partner, Inc. Whore 666. Who, who knows when the audience is watching this podcast. But uh, as of right now, they're like awesome music video for like their song that they've been hyping up forever is going to be dropping soon. And that's dope. I'm excited for that. Definitely look out for that. I'm not going to stop talking about it when it drops. I'm very, very excited. But uh, man, am I excited for everyone to hear our song together. It is. It's a banger. And who knows what it's going to do. Well, I'm looking forward to that for sure. And just so anyone who's listening, if you want to get all of these links to the different profiles, to the songs once they're out, all that stuff will be in the show notes at bandhive.rocks slash 109. That's just the numbers 109. And you can get all the links there. First of all, obviously for Brand and Kawaii AF, but also for all the other profiles that are mentioned, we're going to have them all in there. One nice little directory where you can just go like tap, follow, tap, follow, tap, follow. Make sure you follow everybody. Give them some likes and comments and stuff and uh, help get Kawaii to like 1.5 million. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I remember, uh, Brandon, a few years ago, I reached out to you and I was like, hey, so like, what's going on? Like, if you need help with Facebook or Instagram and stuff like that, I can give you a couple pointers. Because I'd seen like your Facebook and Instagram are like, they're doing good, but like, whatever. And you're like, oh, we're actually doing really well on TikTok. And I was like, I've heard of TikTok, but I don't have TikTok. What is this? And I looked and I was like, I think you were at like five or 10K followers at the time. This was probably mid-2019. And just to see the difference from then to now, now I have TikTok. And that's why we're doing this episode because the For You page showed me your profile. I was like, oh man, like they're still killing it. Okay. What's that journey been like from the start to now? And I guess the first question is initially, what made you decide to create a TikTok in the first place? Because you did it before it was cool. That's true. OG status, baby. The emo hipster line is being blurred here. That's right. I just want to point this out. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So what made us get TikTok was this. We were a struggling band. We were all just scrambling, trying to figure out what to do. Should we play more shows? Should we speed up the process of getting music out? And think about all these things. And oh man, we should be on YouTube. How are we going to get our Facebook page to 100k followers? How are we going to fight Facebook ads? All these things are just scrambling in our heads. Meanwhile, our man behind the scenes, Brandon Bordelon or Waffle Bordelon, depending on if you know him, he <laughs> is like a business visionary. So. He's, you know, seeing a struggle. Meanwhile, he's doing, he, he's doing his, his own thing. But we talk every day. And Waffle's like, hey, bro, you know TikTok, right? And mind y'all, this is like 20, like 19 or late 18. And I say, um, yeah, what about it? You're talking about that lame <laughs> app where everyone just lip syncs and dances? Are you talking about musically? Get out of my face with that. Why are we talking about TikTok right now? Everyone's making fun of TikTok. And of course, I'm part of the bandwagon. And while I was like, listen, listen, shut up for a minute. All right, listen, I've been scrolling on TikTok, bro. These kids are really funny. And I'm like, all right, sure they are. It, and so Waffle puts it into terms that only I would get. He said, Brandon, these kids are like 16 year old to us. And I'm like, oh, because here's the thing about 16 year old me and Waffle is that we were balls to the wall creative. Like we were doing Everything and anything that was different from anything of what our peers were doing. We were Newgrounds kids. We were Adult Swim kids. We were YouTube kids. We knew the internet. And the internet wasn't cool yet. Only through MySpace and Facebook or or whatever. But it wasn't like, it wasn't what we know the internet right now. So we were always ahead of the curve with that. So when he told me that, I'm like, okay, I'm listening. Because by the way, my mantra when when talking to Waffle is shut up and listen to him. Because usually the things that he says are right on the money. Even if it doesn't make sense right now, it's going to make sense like either next month, next year, two years, five years. You, 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 you don't know, but just listen to him. And, and so I did. I'm like, okay, I'll check it out. And then I'm looking, I'm scrolling and he's true. It's very, it's very, very funny. I'm, I'm having a great time, but I see something. I'm seeing a clear trend of patterns and I'm seeing emo content. Now, remember everyone, this is, this is late 2018, early 2019. The emo resurgence that we're seeing did not happen yet. So I'm going to take it back to that time. When Quiet started in 2016, 2017, emo and pop punk were bad words. If you were a band and said you were that, you're not getting anything. The only people who were getting any type of love in that genre 
were like, you know, like like the underground kings, like the story so far, neck deep, knuckle puck, or indie and EDM. That's it. Or rap. Lots of rap. If you're a rapper, you're you're, you're probably having a good time. But if you were a early 2000s styling pop punk band like us, no love, zero, none. There's a time where, where we weren't even calling ourselves that. We just said punk rock so we would get onto shows. <laughs> like, 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 oh yeah, no, we're a punk rock band. So I'm seeing something really different because in my eyes, kids don't care about emo anymore. And if they do, it's emo rap. Like the great Lil Peep, Lil Tracy, Ghost Mane, you know, the SoundCloud rap um, scene. So I'm seeing all these kids lip syncing to like Fall Out Boy and Good Charlotte. And I'm like, wait, these are kids. It's one thing to be in like your mid 20s, early 30s, going to emo night, sharing nostalgic pictures of yourself in, in, in 2007. But it's a whole other thing if kids are doing it. Because if kids are doing it, it means it's cool. It means that it's, it's getting an audience again. And I'm seeing that through TikTok. And I'm like, yo, if we as a band blow this up, we could be on to the next wave. We wouldn't be a nostalgia act. And we wouldn't be trying to attract like, hey, 31-year-old, buy our t-shirt. <laughs> like we would be <laughs> a part of kids like development. Like when I found Simple Plan, I was 13. I still listen to Simple Plan to this day. So I was like, okay, this is our chance. And Waffle always told us in, in meetings, find the emerging platform and own it. Especially find the one that no one is messing with. Because YouTube is oversaturated. Facebook is oversaturated. Instagram is oversaturated. And no one goes on Bandcamp. Don't talk about Bandcamp. <laughs> <laughs> Sad, but true. <laughs> I'm sure Bandcamp's traffic is like every day of the month. First Friday. And then it's just like five people <laughs> for the rest of the month. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Bandcamp. I love the platform, but it's not a popular platform. Outside the DIY scene, at least. Yeah. And so I was like, all right, okay. And the plan was set. Get big on TikTok. Rock that platform. Make that our Vine. Because at the time, like people were still begging for Vine to come back. And mm -hmm. so I'm like, man, forget about Vine coming back. No, actually, no, I didn't say that. Waffle did. Waffle said, forget about Vine coming back. Find the next thing. TikTok's the next thing. Brandon, TikTok is the next thing. And he always told me this because Waffle never wants to be the complete mind. He wants me to fly. And so he's like, he's like, Brandon, I don't know how to make it the next thing, but you got to make it the next thing. And I'm like, thanks. I'll take that and run with it and hope for the best. <laughs> and one faithful early morning, this is 2 a.m., 3 a.m. I'm scrolling like I was for about a week. And I come across this video from this uh, kid named Simon Trepp. The skit was him being a band guy from like 2007, like writing a song. <laughs> And, you know, he's like, so guys, I think it go like, dirt, I need you, dirt, I want you, dirt, I adore you. Ooh, run the one down. And I'm like, haha, that's hilarious. And so, like, you know, I like it and I share it to the band page. I'm like, hey guys, look, that's how we come up with songs. And then I went to the comment section and I saw hundreds of comments being like, oh my God, make this a song. Oh my God, why is it low key bop? Wait a minute. Yo, I would listen to this. I'm like, that's cool. And then a light bulb came into my head. I'm like, he's not an artist. We're artists. We could make that a real song. <gasps> ah! And so then the next few days was me just talking at a million miles an hour to people who don't go on TikTok. I had to convince my other <laughs> band members to understand TikTok, even though I didn't even fully understand it yet. I was like, guys, blah, 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 song, blah, 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 trend, blah, 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 big. And they're like, sure, dude, whatever. I'm like, just go with me on this. And mind you, we as a band did not even have a TikTok yet. I was on my personal account. As a band, we did not have <laughs> yeah. a personal account yet. So anyway, they listen to me and we take this man snippet, write a full song and like, you know, try to hype it up. And so what I did was I made like a little like hype up thing by just duetting the video and simply saying, hey, I'm making a song with this. Stay tuned. That got some love. You know, there are people in the comment section who were like, oh, my God, tell me when it's out. And I'm like, cool. And I, I kept up with them. And it took us maybe like a month or two to get it, you know, 
all done because we all did it like you know like in-house correct me if i'm wrong but this was 2007 called they want their jeans back right? correct james okay <laughs> yeah so that'll be linked in the show notes as well i was like i know this song <laughs> <laughs> I just love hyping things up. So, yes, it was 2007 called They Want Their Jeans Back. And we thought, okay, how are we going to promote it? And Waffle said, what are you talking about? It's on SoundCloud already. We're like, what? It's <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> I figured, eh, put it out. Like, that, because we usually overthink things. And Waffle's like, mm-hmm. eh, here it goes. We're like, ah! Oh! And so, like, all right. And so I, so I quickly made a TikTok being like, hey guys, um, I'm back. It's out. And I like, <laughs> so I sent that out. And then I have found one of the messages that someone said months ago about reminding them. And I did tell them, like, hey, this uh, song's out. And she was like, awesome. I'm so excited. Yay. And then I went to work. <laughs> I went to work that uh, the next day. Yeah, it was like by like the next day. And at 1230 p.m., I'm at work. I'm doing dishes. And I go to, you know, like, like the bathroom check my phone like I normally do. And my Instagram notifications are blowing up (laughs) and my TikTok is blowing up. And I'm like, what's happening? And so I go and see what's happening. The girl who I messaged about, hey, this song is out and, and her being excited for it. She made her own video hyping up that this song was real. And that video is what made 2007 called they want their jeans back on SoundCloud get over 20k in, a, in in less than 24 hours. And I want y'all to understand that being a emo pop punk band <laughs> in in 2019 on SoundCloud getting those numbers is huge. And not only that, yeah, that's bonkers. Like right, like like a pop punk band. And when I was excited about it, I went to one of the Facebook pop punk groups I was still a part of. I'm not on any anymore. But at the time, hey, guys, songs out and we're doing well. And people were like on SoundCloud. Yeah, you bodied that. Get out of here. I'm like, no, it's real. (laughs) Like, that's how bonkers it was that a pop punk band getting over and it was still climbing up. It was still just climbing up. And all the comments were positive. Which is also nuts because folks, kids won't hold back if they don't have to. Kids have nothing to lose. So if they wanted to tell me, hey, this song sucks, kill yourself, they would do it with no problem. So getting overwhelming positive reactions to a new song from a new artist they don't know is bananas. It's like, it's genuine. It's genuine love. And then. When we thought it was over, when we thought that, okay, it's going to stop at like 20K and that's awesome. Someone else who was a fan of that song made it to a sound. We didn't make it to a sound. We didn't know how to yet. They made it into a sound. And then a few months later, that sound went mini viral to where that like big TikTokers were using that sound. Our song in their TikToks. That's so sick. Someone used our song as their like their follower count milestone video of them taking a little snippet out of each day leading up to them, you know, getting how many followers. So so that's like months of of just listening to our song. That's in, it was insane. And here is the sad part, folks. We had no way to gain personally from this because that da da da. It wasn't our TikTok. Da, 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 da. At the band, we didn't have a TikTok. Da, 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 da. We had no way of like capturing that spark. We were just too excited to be business minded, which was one of the lessons that we had to learn early on is that you can have success. And in this day and age, success can come by pretty easy. But it's what you do during that success is what will, you know, propel you. So. Man, if only we had the business mindset that we have now when it happened. Man, who knows who knows where we went, where we where we would be. But that was what what ignited us to get a band account and to get better at TikTok, which was a whole other monster on its own. <laughs> yeah, I mean that really sucks that you weren't able to capitalize on that really, but you're clearly doing something right because you're able to sustain that 
and you're at 110K almost now. So like there's something there that people are following along with. They're following you for a reason because like you were saying, the younger generation, which I mean, I feel bad. I'm 28. You're also 28, I believe, right? Saying that makes me feel so old. It's like we're talking about people 10 years younger than us maybe. (laughs) But point being is they wouldn't follow if they're not interested in it. So like that's huge. And the people that we were able to grip during the heat are still with us today. So even though we couldn't, you know, capture because so many kids videos were getting like, like 60K, 90K likes on every video with our song and did not have our name in it on the sound. <laughs> oh, that's brutal. I had to like go into comment sections like, hey, that's us. What's up? <laughs> Some of them were like, oh, that's awesome. And, you know, the day would like follow and like, you know, like we're still with us. Others, we lost along the way because we couldn't capture it. But that, that's, that's the game. That's the way it goes. But yeah, no, no, like that did give us so much like spark. We're like, okay, we're yeah. doing something right. Because at the time, emo bands weren't blowing up yet. Yet. That would happen around 2020. Yeah. Well, so let's jump into that and talk about the journey. You mentioned you hit the 70K plateau where you were there for quite some time. When was that? Okay, so the 70 70- K plateau was sometime around January. This was during our first viral hit. Now, before this viral hit, we did have videos that did well. We did, you know, band related things, like mm-hmm. in terms of like skits, those did well and get us recognized by like Fall Boys, like management and stuff. Like P Wins, like follows us. That's huge. Yes, it is. <laughs> Thank you. We saw like little bitty successes, but our big viral hit was when Hopeless Records reached out to us when Dear Maria Count Me In by All Time Low got big on TikTok through, you know, some kid screaming out, it wasn't a phase, it's a lifestyle. <laughs> and so Hopeless Records, you know, saw that we, you know, were doing pretty well. And like, hey, we hire y'all to, uh, you know, do something with that sound. And we're like, cool. And so we did. And, oh, forgot to mention, a big part of this was that we created Created the big, big word, and people are going to come at me. We popularized green screen hot topic videos. That was a trend that we found by ourselves. Okay, so I'll make a timeline. Our first big hit was me and Ricky doing an anime opening that we created that did well, and that was very exciting. But then a bunch of, you know, nothing, 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 nothing. And then, and then we made our first like successful Fall Boy video and our successful Pan Disco video. And a little bitty, bitty, bitty here, a little bitty here, a little bitty here. And then I made my first Hot Topic video. Meanwhile, I laid down Hot Topic. That was you know, the first one, specifics. What we mastered is authenticity, accuracy, and um, specifics. Our slogan on, on TikTok is, Welcome to TikTok, home of the most accurate emo memes. <laughs> we weren't doing like broad things. We're like getting as, as, as niche as possible. So when when someone sees it, they're like, no, I don't know anyone knew this. Like, 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 like we weren't just being like, hey, guys, you like MCR? Like, no, it was like, hey, guys, you know, this specific thing and it was like, yo, and, and, yeah. and it's a lot of people anyway. So we popularized that. I haven't seen anything before it. I, I do think that I did create that trend of bringing some hot topic, which you see a lot now. But anyway, Hobo Becker saw that, saw that we did pretty well with that. And so, oh, I was doing one with, with All Time Love. And that was our first mega hit. That was our first million and then two million. That's the one that had Hot Topic nice. commenting onto it like directly. And that was like the first like big monster hit. We were, we were number one on the Dear Maria Count Me In sound for a long time. And that's Sick. so freaking cool. Who knows how many times I listened to that song. Like as a teenager. But anyway, after that, another learning experience. We were too hyped on that. We're like, okay, cool. We can just keep keep rolling with this. And 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 we had this idea of only uploading if we think it's a monster banger. Which means we were like, okay, we can rock with a video for like a week or two weeks. And because we used to do every day, like like you know, in the early, earlier days. But then Mm -hmm. we were, okay, we can do, that's not necessary. (laughs) We didn't know how necessary it was yet. Anyway, we got way too confident with that whole banger only aspect because we were always fighting the algorithm. Any TikTok creator can, you know, tell you about the algorithm and how 
you don't know it. Like people can upload quick tips on getting big on TikTok, but that quick tip is going to be null and void in a week because it's ever changing. TikTok's always changing the game. You don't know what tips are gonna help you. So it's kind of just the wild, wild west and you learn as you go. And with the whole time low video, we're like, okay, beggars only because we see what works. And that is when we hit our big flat toe. Nothing that we were putting out was popping. And then we're like doubting ourselves and you know, like trying to figure out like other other things, which makes you do other trends. And like, if I could give anyone like, some advice if they want to do this, trial and error is part of the game. But when you find your niche, you found your niche and you should like stick with that niche. And you know, that might seem limiting. I thought it was. I didn't want to do any more hot topic videos because I thought that was going to get old. Like our band stuff got old. I ran out of Fall Out Boy jokes. Like, and I'm not going to keep, you know, like just searching for, 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 for Fall Out Boy jokes that I've made already. Like, I, I know what it's like to watch a creator do the same thing forever. It gets annoying. And so I'm not, I'm not dumb. I'm not going to do that, which I wasn't wrong, but I wasn't also right either. Because it wasn't, I had to keep doing Hot Topic. Big Brent Waffle came in again. He was like, bro, don't you realize that you're creating a universe? And I'm like, what do you mean? Bro, it doesn't just stop with Hot Topic. You can create the entire mall experience. And I'm like, yo, he did it again. <laughs> yes. He did it again. And it's all for your entertainment. <laughs> exactly. FYE, baby. <laughs> Sorry, I can't help dropping bad puns. That's my brand. <laughs> hey, hey. Good brand. What do you say? Niche. But um, but um, <laughs> like me being like, well, guys, I can't keep doing hot topics forever. So we got to find something else. It wasn't that. He was like, bro, you found it. You just weren't using it properly. You were stuck in this. I got to do hot topic. I do hot topic. It's like, no, people are embracing this because there's, there's two things. The two audiences that we have. We have people our age who want to reminisce on the past. And we have kids who didn't get to experience this, who want to, and they're experiencing it through our lens, through our eyes. Like we became the that 70s show of emo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is going to be one of the highlight clips from this episode. I can guarantee it. Yes. So I found the niche. It wasn't, it wasn't emo bands because that has a ceiling. It wasn't even Hot Topic memories. That's a ceiling. But the mall experience is not a ceiling. And... You could bring in other people, like you can like like collab easier because it's so open, and uh, that's kind of what we're experiencing uh, right now. Is that we've I found what works again, and I'm I'm using the tools I learned on the way to, to to try to make sure that we don't plateau again. It's gonna happen again. I'm not dumb. It's gonna happen again because that's how the algorithm works. But right now, I trust myself again because that's another big thing. Is that I had some negative, you know, like outside talk getting into my head. So it's about being confident in the content that you can create. Yeah, being confident and having, you know, like no creative blockage. People who are on your side, people who like get what you're doing and want to help. And, and we have that tenfold right now. There's no more negative influences like clouding the creative process. I can work and work efficiently. And that's, that's what it's about. We have found a workflow. We have found work consistency. We have found the schedule, which was things that did not exist back then. It was just like, hey, um, come when you can, I guess. And oh, I don't think I could do that day and all this stuff. But now we found two days that work for us. Uh, we do TikToks every Monday and Thursday. And we make as much as we can so we can put them out during the week until it's next time to shoot. But not doing too much because with trends, with trends, it's gonna go like that. Here is the Brandon Cunningham Quaya formula. It's find a trend, but don't do it completely. Find a way to filter it through our niche that works with us. I don't know how to, how, how to give an example of this because TikTok trends are so specific, but <laughs> like, don't do like paint by the numbers. Like don't just copy and all right, that's the video. Still be creative with it. Yeah, so be original, but also go with what's working for other people. Don't cut and paste. You take it, you copy it, and then do the remix. And you're like, this is what we're doing, right? Yep. 
Yeah, which is exactly what TikTok is about. TikTok is about creating from you know other creativity. That's a platform, which is another thing that I gotta tell anybody who wants to do anything really, but but specifically we're talking about TikTok. If you're gonna get into TikTok, which a lot of people did during the pandemic, if you're going to try to use that as a, as a tool, you have to learn that tool. You can't just rely on like YouTube like helpful tips or even just like kind of just doing whatever you want you gotta spend some time knowing the language of the platform that you want to use there's slang there's angles and that's for anything youtube has a language instagram has a language facebook has a language every platform has a discord has a language and you gotta learn that language because kids if they sense even a hint of fakery they're gonna know they will not let you breathe if you fake it. You got to be real. You got to be honest. You got to love what you're doing because they're going to they're gonna figure you out. And the best way to being, you know, like called out is actually love it. I spend time on TikTok when I'm not working, like when I'm not looking for the next trend. I'm just like, ah, I go on TikTok to be entertained, to laugh. I am TikTok audience as well as a creator. Same. I'm not a, a big creator like you, but I am the audience. It's a cool app. Like... I still scroll through Instagram, especially stories, but like when I want to see something for the most part uplifting or funny, TikTok is the go-to. Because like Instagram is just all my friends, which I mean, I have great friends, don't get me wrong. <laughs> not hating on them. But they're not posting like comedy stuff most of the time. If I want to see something funny or I want to go see cute dogs like the UPS and FedEx drivers that post dogs, that's like one of my favorite parts of TikTok. And then there's the stuff like what you're doing, like the, or Matt Cutchell is doing, or all the people are like, yeah, this is like life in the 2000s. I'm like, yep, that's sick. All that stuff is on TikTok. I don't see any of that on Instagram, which on that note, do you see value in those older platforms? Like, do you think bands should be on those platforms or should you go all in on TikTok at least to give it a try? I'm going to be real. Bands go on TikTok. What are you doing? <laughs> like, 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 come on. Like, okay, the crazy thing is that you can yell at bands or artists to go on TikTok, please. But, you know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. But, like, there's so much proof that it, that this is it. That's a frustrating thing, especially if people ask you, hey, what should I do? And you're like, oh, do this. Ah, but I don't want to do that. Then what are you asking me for? Yeah, that's the excuse of every local band ever who stays a local band. And then there's the bands like you who are like, I don't know, but I mean, we'll try. And look where it got you. Like, you have 110,000 people following you on this platform. And then when you add in your other platforms, like I didn't look up the numbers for the other platforms because we're here to talk about TikTok. But you've got to have at least a couple thousand more on those other platforms when you add everything up. That's huge. How many local or regional bands can say that? That's like usually the point where if you're at that level, you have at least some kind of deal with an indie label, like a real indie label, not your buddy who does tapes out of his garage or whatever. But you did it without that investment from an outside party. I mean, obviously you had a deal with All Time Low or uh, Hopeless Records specifically, but that wasn't like, hey, we're going to give you money to go make a record. It's like, we want you to do this video for us. You know, that's very different from getting a label deal. And you made it happen. You built this yourself. Thank you. Yeah. Me and Waffle have, have, have this thing to where that we'll be like, hey, yo, can we like stop for a minute? Because we're always planning. We're always, you know, talking about the next step. And but we're like, hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, 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 yo, right now, can we just like talk about how impressive this all is? And I'm like, huh? Like, bro, don't you realize that you are doing what other people haven't done? And I'm like, whoa, wait. Like, <laughs> yeah, which is really, really crazy. I do not take for granted because this is all I ever wanted to do. I always wanted to get big on the internet. Like, like, like I said, I was a Newgrounds kid. I was a YouTube kid. Me and Wahoo had a YouTube channel in high school that we, 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 we were trying to get big, which I think could have happened, but it was high school. But, um, this was the, the first, like, holy, holy crap, like, I did it. Like, kids, kids tell me, hey, this reminds me of Smosh. And I'm like, Jesus, <laughs> that's crazy. And, and, like, TikTok has made me, like, become acquaintances with the bands that I, I love. It's nuts. It's, it has opened all the doors. Bands, listen to me. Without TikTok, 
Choir Yap would be nowhere. We would just be that local band. That's cool if you want to be a local band. I'll just stress that out. If you don't want to be famous, that's okay. If being in a band is a, a fun thing that you want to do with your friends on weekends, that's cool. No hate to you at all. More power to you. I want to be Prince. <laughs> I want to be a. I want to be a <laughs> rock star. I want to be a pop star. And I have no fear of saying that. Like I kind of used to, because it's so crazy that the 2010s made it a stigma to where if you said you wanted to be a rock star, you were like a bad person. How dare you want to have money for your work? How dare you want fame, you bad person, you. But but now I'm like, man, I want to be a rock star. Always have, always will want to be a rock star. That's it. And TikTok is giving to me that because TikTok became what MTV was in the 90s and early 1000s. Like, I was there before Lil Nas X was the pop star he is. And that's insane. Because when we were on TikTok, Lil Nas X's song, Old Town Road, wasn't on the radio yet. It was just a really big trend on TikTok. It was not on the radio. It was, it was yeah. a big, big trend. And Lil Nas X actually what inspired me to be like, yo, if you have a song that goes to a trend, that can be it for you. That can like skyrocket you. And it did. I was correct. Because then Old Town Road happened. But then he didn't let himself become a one hit wonder. He one of the biggest pop stars we have. Same with Doja Cat. Yeah. Like, like, like she was a meme artist with a moon song. But I saw, I, I saw what they were doing. Because anyone who knows like trends and like studies what made things happen are like little bitty gimmicks, but with a big plan behind it. Like Doja Cat wasn't, I'm gonna make a joke song, and that's gonna be the it for me. Like, no. So the cows, I want to be, I want to be a pop star. And this, I'm gonna do it. Watch me. You gotta be on on to the next thing. TikTok wasn't big. Everyone made fun of it. Everyone said it was lame. I said it was lame. Everyone said it was lame. The only people who who liked it were weird kids who wanted wanted an outlet. And that's exactly what happened because TikTok is counterculture at a billion. It's it. And if you aren't on it right now, you're tripping because. The next thing is about to happen. We don't know what it is, but the next thing is happening right now. And you got to get on it. We got to get on it. Like everyone's got to get on it if you want to keep doing this because TikTok isn't going to be forever. It's not. It just isn't because that's not how the internet works. Like we thought that MySpace was going to be forever. We thought Facebook was going to be forever. I mean, it is, but no one likes it. (laughs) Yeah. And now it's just all going down in flames. Exactly. That's a Taylor Swift pun for the record. (laughs) Oh, oh, nice. Whatever that song's like, it's going to be forever. We're going down <laughs> in flames. flames. <laughs> <laughs> you get me. I I think you posted a Taylor Swift thing the other day, right? Or was that somebody else? I'm I probably about? did. I, I love Taylor Swift so great. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just, I want to jump in and back you up here because what you were saying about Little Nas X, I know Little Nas X is big, but then I was watching the baseball playoffs and like every other inning, there was an ad with Little Nas X and Elton John, and that made me realize, like, wow, he is now at that level. That is huge. And so even though I knew he was, like, a household name, that's what really set it in stone for me. Like, okay, that's insane. So for anyone listening who, you know, was in a bubble like I was and didn't watch the uh, World Series or the ALCS or whatever, that's how big Little Nas X is. He's in ads with Elton John. That's bonkers. That's insane. He's that caliber. And but yeah, a big part of why we got to be on TikTok was the fact that we captured a market that wasn't big on a platform that had not hit its like peak yet. So we got in at a good time. It wasn't the best time though. Like if we would have got in like a year before, man, who knows where where, where we would have been. But in terms of like baseball, we slide into home. There's a bunch of dust. Are they safe? Are they out? It's safe. <laughs> like, 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 ooh. Could have gone to replay. Exactly. <laughs> like, I would not have wanted to have started TikTok during the pandemic, which was when a lot of artists hopped on. A lot of artists yeah. hopped on TikTok during the pandemic because there's nothing else to do. I would not want to have been there for that. I would much have rather struggle to fight a plateau versus, versus trying to start. But to not discourage anybody. Anyone can do this if, if, if you start today. There are no limits. Do not get discouraged because that's that's what they want you to do. I don't know who, who they is, but <laughs> don't get discouraged. Like, do it. 
you can get big right now if you start. If you start and you're and you are consistent and you learn the platform, you can do it. Any band can do it. I'm still seeing it happen. I'm scrolling through TikTok and I'm seeing like a new artist every day. Every day. Like new artists are being found and discovered every day on TikTok all the time on acoustic songs. They're not big songs. They're not even even high production. Some of them is just them singing into a a, a Walmart <laughs> mic, a Walmart earpiece. <laughs> but if it hits the pocket, if it hits the algorithm just right, if enough people see it, that video that is at 100K likes or even more, and they're getting offered deals. MTV. It is MTV. It is equivalent to the Headbangers Ball. It is that. It is TRL. It's everything. Because there's so many niches. I'm just talking about mine, the emo alternative. But there's other niches. There's the indie niche. There's the, there's the folk niche, the pop niche, the hip-hop niche. It's all the niches because TikTok, what you see on TikTok is dedicated to what you like on TikTok. Like, your TikTok experience is different from mine completely. You go on your For You page, you're going to see dogs. <laughs> but if you go on mine, you're, you're going to be probably see, like, some kid playing with mustard. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to tell you my my niche. My niche on TikTok is weird, emo, alternative, gay TikTok. That is my TikTok. <laughs> That's where the good stuff is. I, I try to keep it that way. But you, you can find your niche. You just got to, you know, taking the time to tell TikTok what you want and they'll give it to you <laughs> and you'll stay there. Yeah. I want to highlight a couple of things here. You've already talked about this. I had it written down as a question, but your personality is such a big part of your brand. And you already mentioned about being authentic and how the audience on TikTok can tell when someone isn't authentic. So I just wanted to circle back and touch on that and say, you know, that is so incredibly important. And even for me, when I look at TikTok, a lot of stuff, you know, it's staged, like whatever. But when they're trying to pass it off as real, like you go to the comments and like nine out of 10 comments are like, oh, this is staged. This is totally made up. Like no way this ever happened. And it's like, yeah, people don't like seeing that it gets a ton of engagement. So maybe the algorithm is like, okay, cool, show this to more people and you get more engagement, but it's probably not going to get the follow. At least from what I assume about the platform, being somebody who doesn't know, I think what you say about authenticity is what gets you the follows, right? I'm going to give you one of the biggest examples that happened this year with the kids figuring something out. So we're a pop punk band with, with colored haired members and people love us. A band called Tram Stamps happened. Do you know about Tram Stamps? Yes, I remember the scandal about how everyone thought they were industry plants. Yeah, yeah, they got the hammer. Those kids went in on them. And like, I remember seeing a Tramp Stamps video and, you know, it was doing well. They were doing well, numbers. And I was like, oh, wow, I don't like that song, but whatever. I kept going. <laughs> I kept going. I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. Because at this point, I'm, I do try to support any movement towards emo and pop punk even if it's something i don't particularly care for i want to support it because hey if someone else eats we gonna eat too the 2010s was so much of no that's not correct get it out of my face and and that's why rock didn't <laughs> do anything in the 2010s but that's another story but yeah so like i was seeing you know like the whole tramp stamps thing and, and then people were like oh yeah they're industry plants and when it comes to me wait 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 Industry plantery, that, that's such a, yeah, that's such a broad thing. And there's so many, like, you know, factors to, to consider. Like, do I think trans stamps was fake? I'm like, like, they didn't really hide the fact that they had industry things. They just didn't word things very nicely. They also didn't react well to the drama, which is a whole other thing that, that they don't teach you when you're, when you're becoming a, you know, influencer is the way you handle drama can make or break you. And the way they handled the drama it won the best, and and the people won. And I'm pretty sure Tramp Stamps is no more today. Today, I was on TikTok and I saw you know who I thought was one of the members. I was like, but separate, just you know, just kind of just like starting over. I'm like, hey, you're that Tramp Stamps person, but I you know I let it be. That ain't my business. But yeah, authenticity will always win, even if it doesn't seem like it like it at first. Even if it doesn't seem like it at first, it's like, okay, this person's fake, but they're winning. Okay, check back on them. Check back on them. They're probably not going to win. But like, I've been saying this for like, you know, maybe like a few months. The real will rise, the fake will fall. That's just how it is. Even if it doesn't seem like it at first, 
if it seems like the, the fakest artist with the fakest story, with the most lied to everything is just winning. The numbers, winning. The comments, winning. The accolades, winning. I sound like Charlie Sheen, <laughs> winning. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but check back on them. They're probably not going to make it. And if you blow up fast, you're probably going to like, you know, flicker out faster. Like if it wasn't real, which is why even when it seems like, oh, man, our numbers aren't growing as fast as it did a a month ago. I got to remind myself, hey, 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 that is how it is. The fact that we didn't blow up two years ago is a good thing because we we weren't ready yet. I'm fine to rise. I just want to, you know, gain all the information that I can. So when it does happen. We'll be ready. We're getting to that point. We're getting to that point to where if like the success that we want was offered to us, like right now, we would be able to be like, okay, here's next. Like we would have a plan. We would have some plan in motion because it's getting to that point. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, first of all, I totally agree with what you say about if there's that meteoric rise, then it's just going to quickly flicker, flicker, fade. But the other thing is in the music industry, in the back end of the industry, when it comes to things like somebody gets asked to go out on the road for the first time, you fake it till you make it. It's like, you can't teach somebody how to tour. You can teach them what to expect. And that's what we try to do here with Bandhive. But that first tour anybody does, (laughs) fake it till you make it. And a lot of the music industry is like that. But with your fans, you just cannot do that because you're going to get called out. I think Bryn, you and the band are spot on in what you're doing. It's really cool to see this rise on any platform, getting 100,000 followers in two years is amazing. That's huge. That's got to be like the top 5% of creators on TikTok for that rise. Like, obviously, it's not 1.5 million like Matt Kutchel, but he had that audience from Vine already. You guys started basically from scratch, and that's what's amazing about it. Thank you. Yeah, that's what we always uh, try to remind ourselves because, man, do we get in, in our heads. I, I ain't even going to lie to you, America. I'm not even going to lie to you. I'm not even going to lie to you, man. Man, some days we wake up and we're like, everything's on fire. Make it stop. But, you know, like, that's just that's just the plight of not only an artist, but as a human. But I always say, if I feel like my world is on fire, it's probably about to be put out soon. Yeah, this is just the worst part. But I I always tell my mom myself, I'm going to get out because I was in that stage before we blew up again. Like before we we had to make some changes to how we do things because we did because there was a back to the drawing board like meeting. There's like, yo, some things aren't working. We got to figure out what works and go with it. And a lot of it was we knew the right thing to do, but we were fighting it because there's always that part that there's always that like, oh, I don't know. Don't doubt it, y'all. Don't doubt it. You has got to go with it, man. Like, just, just the universe will tell you you're doing something right, and the universe will tell you when you're doing something wrong. <laughs> so our rise has been such a wild ride, and I'm, ha- and I'm very happy about, like, the fan base that we, ha- that we have. Like, the Quiet fan base is, like, so devoted and so very, very nice. And uh, another thing that I did to, you know, try to capture that audience was, like, you know, uh, we had the uh, Instagram Thursday live stream. That was, uh, you know, every Thursday. It, it's At the time of this recording, it has stopped for right now. I do want to get back to it. But we had to take a break from it because we were, you know, getting that that dreaded creator burnout. Yeah, especially right now, the holidays are happening as well. So things get a little crazy to uh, to pile on top of that burnout. Yeah. So that was part of the, you know, the drawing board you know, aspect. But I still do communicate with my fans like every day. It really is a community and it's a community that goes beyond us. It was really cool. They have their own group mm-hmm. chat. It, 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 it's its own animal that does things without us. And that's really cool. But yeah, so by the way, they're really, really bummed about the whole like no live thing right now, which I totally, totally like understand because we have been like every Thursday <laughs> for like two years. Yeah. But like, you know, like, I'm just trying to find, you know, the next way to, to, you know, communicate with them because like scheduling right now is just, it is what's stopping that. But yeah, like there's still like open communication that, that goes in with the community that I love very, very much. My favorite part of this is commenting back. My favorite part of when a video does well are the comments because I get to Mm -hmm. vibe with people. I didn't make this video in hopes of just getting big. I made this video in hopes of, you know, yeah, it it doing well, but also to 
to talk about the thing that that the video is about. Like, I love talking about Hot Topic. I love talking about Invader Zim. I love talking about bands. That's what it does. Yeah. It's me, like, creating a filter to talk to people about the things that everyone around me are tired of talking about. Yeah, I mean, it goes back to just being on brand for your personality. Like, that's really what it is. Now, on that note, I know it's it's almost an hour and a half since we jumped on the call. It's a Saturday night. I want to be respectful of your time. But this has been a blast, Brandon. Thank you so much for joining us at Kawaii AF underscore official on Instagram and, of course, TikTok. Go follow the band. Hopefully those live streams on Thursday nights will be back soon, probably in the new year, I assume, because it doesn't make sense to start it during the holidays now. But thank you so much for being here. What else do you want people to check out for the band or for you personally? I would like everyone to please join our Discord. That's something I didn't, you know, I talk about a lot on here, but I want to do it right now, y'all. Like I said, you always want to be on onto the next thing. And Discord right now is getting pretty, pretty big. It was a small thing that was just for, you know, like it was the other Skype, but for gamers. But now it's turning into a big, big, big platform. And like we want to be a part of that because Discord is great with really creating events for a community. It's a great community builder. It's a great hub to hang out with whoever. It's really, really fun. There's nothing big happening right now with it because we're still learning it. But hey, yo, hop hop on it while it's, you know, fresh. Be on the ride with us. That's fun too. But yeah, so so, so our Discord is Kawaiiverse. It is on our link tree on, on Instagram. That's the quickest way to get to it. So, but yeah, like Discord, check us out on there. Kawaiiverse, come hang out. It's fun. Send GIFs. GIFs? Ah, oh, dang, I forgot what it is. <laughs> it's not the peanut butter. It's not the peanut butter. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but yeah, you know, but yeah, Dis- Discord, Kawaiiverse, that's where we're trying to really like do do some cool stuff. Get in on some dope giveaways. Get in on, you know, some like, you know, like first looks and all that stuff. That's where it, where we're trying to make the Discord. Also, we're, you know, trying to do like watch parties and whatnot, you know. We we're, we're trying to, you know, have fun with our fans. It's also a good place to meet other Kawaii fans. So, yeah, Discord, Kawaiiverse. And, uh, you know, obviously check us out on uh, Spotify. I think that's about it. Stay tuned for the new album. Oh, yeah. Whenever that's, you know, going in, you'll know. Really watch our stories, y'all. Our stories is where half our information goes to. I love being on stories. But, yeah, so check us out on all our platforms, which I'm sure is going to be, you know, like in, in the linky links. But yeah, check us out, man. <laughs> All right, sick. Well, yeah, me being the noob of Discord, even though I've been on it for like four years since I used to do a lot of gaming, I still went to look it up. It's like, oh yeah, I need to get the link to join. I can't just search it. So it's in the link tree, like you said. We'll put the link tree as well as the uh, actual Discord link in our show notes at bandhive.rocks slash 109 so everybody can go, like I said earlier, just click all the links, follow all the people that Brandon has mentioned, as well as, of course, the band themselves. Go check that all out. And again, this has been amazing. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your Saturday evening to join us here on the show. And bands, I really hope you listen and go make a TikTok. Like, I'm no TikTok expert. I'm a noob at TikTok, but at least for the foreseeable future, this is the next big platform and you got to get on that and ride that wave. Yeah, I do. Yo, man, James, this is so much fun. I could talk forever. <laughs> I'm down. Let's do this again. We might have to talk about Discord. Ooh, yeah, maybe. Cool. We'll talk about that later. But Brandon, thank you so much, man. All right. Peace out, y'all. That does it for this episode of the Bandhive Podcast. Thank you so much for listening and thank you, Brandon, for coming on the show. It was great to have you here with all that super high energy. What a fun time. So thank you again for coming on the show and everyone who's listening, I hope you listen to Brandon's advice and start a TikTok. It's so worth it to do and in the big picture, it's actually really easy compared to the other things that you probably should be doing for your band. So having a good social media presence is absolutely key and TikTok is the way of the future. So go do that and let us know how it goes for you. We'll be back with another brand new episode next Tuesday at 6 a.m. Eastern time. Until then, I hope you have a great New Year's. Stay safe. And of course, as always, keep rocking. (laughs) 